Is it just the US? Did they just open it? Uh, it was very amb- ambiguous. I never got an exact answer um, when I looked. But to be fair, I haven't actually delved quite deep. But it just did make me wonder, because if you remember going back about sort of six or so months, all the Microsoft... Microsoft MVPs were up in arms because when they heard that Microsoft employees were going to get a free Windows 7 phone, they all wanted one as well. Um, I think there was a lot of tweets about some Microsoft MVPs wanting a, a free phone. Um, and I just wondered where that figure for 40,000, which doesn't seem to have increased at all since uh, last week's release. You just, don't uh, say anything that pretty much tells you everything because yeah. uh, Microsoft, you probably would try, some people would try to challenge, but no, Microsoft always gives the numbers, especially if it's good. And as far as I know, the Kinect actually gave, gave out some numbers within like days or something of the release of the thing. They always give out numbers, especially if it's good, and they always exaggerate them. They have all kinds of way channel stuffing, and they can give it to staff, or they can have pre-orders lumped into the first week of the sale. So what they do is they accumulate pre-sales, uh, pre pre-order sales or prospective sales uh, for months beforehand and then they say wow upon lunch we had like I don't know half a million phones but they don't actually tell you this is like the accumulation of many months of people buying things and all kinds of corporate clients and then pushing it into the warehouses of of, uh, of shops so yes they do sell the things that they sell them to clients well and not necessarily it could just be selling them to shops now, in this case, we're quite fortunate because of the kin. I don't think shops are willing to stock these things too well, and, and that happened also after uh, Windows Vista. Uh, companies were, they thought this was going to be the, the greatest thing. And lots of shops even went bankrupt after the, the Vista. They couldn't sell enough PCs. People would see a Vista on it. They wouldn't buy the computers, and then they had all, all those stocks of you know, computers with Vista pre-installed. Uh, so that the second time around... Uh, with all kinds of products, even the Zune or the Xbox, especially Xbox outside the outside the United States, you have to remember the difference that this is the only American console, so Microsoft only wants you to know how much it sells in the United, United States. Uh, every All these products don't sell ex- exceptionally well. I think some of them get kind of uh, uh, settled with the, you know, some computers get settled with Windows or with Office in some cases, but that's the main thing that brings money to, to Microsoft right now. And everything else, these shops don't really want to put much... Uh, you, have, you have even the Sidekick, or can you think of any very successful hardware? I thing was just going to say... So I was just going to say, you know, they, they tout the Connect as some sort of great success. Let's say, for for argument's sake, that the figures that they're quoting are true, and all the stores are selling out. Which I mean, I would challenge straight away because I looked online the other day and found plenty of places where the Connect was in stock. Um, let's let's say what Microsoft claims is correct. Of course, they're going to sell well. I mean, Connect is is just effectively a controller for the Xbox 360. So they've already got yeah, the I mean, user base of the 360. Half a billion in marketing. Yeah. I think half um, as far as as far as I, I got it, this from. Uh, all things digital, all things D, which is like a Wall Street Journal type thing, and they. This is where I found out about the amount of money they spend on marketing this thing, and you, you can see that they actually do market this thing quite heavily because it's nothing too, uh, too innovative compared to what's available from Sony and Nintendo. Yeah. You don't see quite the same amount of marketing from these two companies, um, but I saw the figures, and actually the first instinct was that that's quite. That's quite miserable. I think only about two to three percent of people who owned an Xbox 360 actually bought one of these things. Mm. Uh, and I just yeah. thought mm, they shouldn't brag about these numbers. And that's no. the pre-orders, you know. And, and they said the pre-orders are marvelous. You know, great numbers. And that's uh, just and, a and also, and also what the what's not mentioned that often, which surprises me, that Sony haven't made a big deal of this, um, which maybe shows that uh, Sony has more integrity in, in regards to this matter. But uh, the Sony um, equivalent device, the Move, um, was up against the uh, Kinect at the uh, GameCon 2010, and the Move device won the Innovation of the Year award over the Kinect. Um, but I don't see that being touted at every uh, every step of the way like you would uh, if it come from Microsoft. So I think no, so Sony it. actually openly spoke, and I wrote an article about that. Uh, Sony uh, spoke loudly enough to make quite a few headlines about them uh, making making jokes about Microsoft spending so much money into trying to market Kinect. They basically say, we're not going to spend so much marketing. And from, from, from their point of view, Microsoft can just, just want to go down the drain because that's what they've been doing mm. for the past 
uh, 10 years or so, uh, losing like $7 billion on the Xbox division or something. And even the head of the division, as far as I know, that's uh, Robert back I think he left last no he left this year and just comes to show you you know they're not too happy with performance so whether he was laid off or pushed outside or it's just that they lose lots of money there or at least lost a lot of money initially so well my mistake uh, I sort of took us off on a tangent there we um, we are going to start wrapping this up I'll obviously offer Gordon any uh, any other comments he wants to add in before we start to go to the final piece of the uh, of the show Gordon is there anything else you want to add um, no, it, uh, it does seem to be a pattern um, that Microsoft have that they, people don't want to use Microsoft stuff. They have to be either bribed, bullied, threatened, have all choice, all other options removed from them, um, or you know just you know just paid to whatever. They have to to force people to use their stuff. Um, by and large, when when they bring out something new, they. It, no one wants to use it on its own merits. I mean, people use Google because it's good technology. People use Apple because it's good technology. People use Android because it's good. And they use all sorts of things because they want to use them. They're actively choosing to use them. Um, and we see it again and again and again with Microsoft that when they bring out something new, there's an awful lot of people just don't want to use it. And they'll only use it because they're paid to, or they're forced to, Something and um, you know it's as far as Microsoft hemorrhaging money. The more they have to do that, the sooner they go out of business. Mm. Um, but that must be a really sad indictment when you look through all your catalog and you have to force people and pay pay people and bribe people to use your stuff. You really have to seriously wonder what you're doing wrong. But, but that's that's my ending point, and um, I'll I'll go back to coffin now and let you finish. The show. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, Roy. Yeah, I just want to say a small story about just a few seconds. Uh, my grandfather, he's, he's still alive. He uh, he spoke. He asked me a few days ago uh, whether I was using a Mac because he knew I wasn't using Windows, and he doesn't know. I don't talk to him about things that I do professionally. But uh, he asked me if I was using a Mac because he was very happy with some Mac he was using in some hotel uh, some while ago. And he was so excited about the experience that, you know, it was so simple and great, but he wasn't using Windows. He wasn't using uh, the Mac himself. He was just talking about how great it is that he's using Windows. And why is he using Windows? Well, that's what he the computer, and he assumes it's part of the computer and he cannot use something else. Uh, so I think uh, I have a, another project of a conversion to, to Linux sometime. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure we can uh, mention that on here because I've, I've certainly got a few new ones which uh, I'm going to be blogging about first and we can mention on the show at a later date. But uh, thank you very much to Gordon who deserves the award for this show because he's soldiered on bravely throughout the last two hours with a, a stinking cold and he's managed to keep it together very well or had a very good silence button on his microphone. So thank you very much yeah, to Gordon. I've, 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 been, I've, I've been jumping on the mute button quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, well well, that, that, that's an advocate for whatever microphone he's using because we never heard a single cough or splutter here. Um, Roy, thank you very much. I understand that you've got a, um, a tune to see us out with. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Roy. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you download the next episode, and I'll see you shortly. And it's over to Roy for the, uh, the final song out of the, that we'll finish the uh, show off. Yeah, well, I think we agreed on two things. The first, the first thing is we're going to redo the introduction to the show. Uh, it's a little kind of project I think team has been trying to find some time to uh, to do, and we also got a contribution from a person called Marty, who was one of the readers of my site and team site as well. He he's been working on some kind of a nice uh, opening that's that says tech by, that says tech by, sorry. Uh, and the second thing is we probably plan to have different songs at the end of each uh, episode, and it's not going to be the uh, the opening song. It's going to be a variety of different things, and we take it from the same collection from the uh, uh, showcasting artists. I'm going to put a link in the uh, in the show notes that I, I put up. And this one is a Japanese pop song, which which I really quite enjoyed back in the back in 2009, which was new, and it's called Sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> 